Welcome, LinkedIn. I hope I see lots and lots of people here this morning listening. I am Lisa Skydebor Schuler with Kensington, and I am joined by Sue Burnett and Stephanie Kirk. So um, I'll introduce myself first, and then we'll go to Stephanie and then Sue, or maybe Sue then Stephanie, whichever one wants to go first. Um, but I appreciate you guys listening in today. There is tons of stuff that we'd love to cover today. Um, basically, my role within Kensington serves as the category marketing manager for ergonomics in a global capacity, meaning I get to connect with tons of awesome people around the globe. So good morning to those in Canada and the East Coast and the very early risers on the West Coast. Um, and good afternoon to those in the UK and over in Europe that I am connected to as well. Um, we'd love for you guys to drop a comment in. The point of these, um, which really helps me, is to gain feedback um, on products that you guys might like to see, as well as trends that are going on, and just continue to create that noise around ergonomics and wellness uh, in the workplace, as we are very, very happy to see that becoming a mainstream topic right now. Um, so I'm going to pass it to Sue to give a little introduction about her and her company and uh, what she's bringing today. Well, thank you, Lisa. We really appreciate this opportunity right off the bat. Uh, we are in Canada, so we are actually located really close to Detroit. So we are in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, my company is called Ergo Now, and it's been in business now for seven years. I myself have been in ergonomics for more than 23, 24 years, and um, I've been consulting for about 14 of those years. So I started up Ergo now um, with the whole mindset of getting more involved in the product industry. Um, more and more of my time was spent in offices. And just even that, ergonomics, people think office ergo is pretty straightforward. However, as we all know, it is more challenging than most employers do find. So there is multiple, multiple products out there. What is the right product? How are you determining which one works and which one doesn't? We are all built differently, so we all have our different needs. Um, so I dug into it a little bit more, realizing that employers really don't know where to go. Once they get our recommendations, we recommend specific items and then they're kind of at a loss. Like, well, where do I go to get these things? So that had, that's really the main reason why I got into offering product as well. So our company, we provide ergonomic consulting services and then we also provide the product to go along with it. So um, yeah, so, and then Stephanie, is one of my employees. She is my furniture design specialist and we do provide furniture as well as all the accessories. So furniture is a whole huge, huge industry. And so wrapping the brain around that, I just could not take all that on. And as everyone knows, ergonomics, I'm more science-based. Uh, I am not uh, the interior decorator, the uh, design, uh, the spatial side of it as well. So I brought Stephanie on a few years ago and we are working together, which kind of makes our service unique as well. Yeah. So just in conjunction with that, yep, Sue and I work <laughs> together and it, it does work out really great because like I said, Sue can do the, the body assessments and decide what they need and then I can go in and look at the decor that they have now or maybe look at the their current setup and we can try to figure out how we can make those new pieces uh, come in and work with what they already have. So I get to do the fun color stuff I always say to Sue and Sue does the science stuff. So it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good team for sure. And I think it's a really interesting relationship that you have there too that I think it's a piece that a lot of companies might be missing that typically there's the health and safety silo that would include ergonomics, and then there's the facilities or design side of it that takes care of the furniture. Um, so it's a really awesome thing that you guys are bridging that gap to really look at the full picture. Um, 
I mean, with that, Stephanie, what do you think some of the challenges are with some of the ergonomics that we put into it? Because I know it's not always pretty stuff. It's, so it's, it's, not, it's not always easy, but I think what we're really trying to stress at this point is if in the design side of it, people are taking the um, you know ergonomics then you're not doing that band-aid effect after, which is for sure what Sue gets called in for is, you know, trying to, to fix someone that is sore, that's in a really um, poor body posture. And, and if they look at the design side of it ahead of time, we can totally alleviate some of those things, either by adjusting their work height or, um, you know, getting them into a good chair or something like that. So it, it definitely alleviates that, that band-aid uh, solution. Definitely. Uh, it looks like we've got Michael from London. And Michael, I have to ask, do you want to clarify, since there is a London, Canada, um, if you are London, Canada or London, England? I'd love to know. Um, I've been to both. So I would love to know which one you're from. And hi, Meshra from Saudi Arabia, too. It's pretty cool um, that this platform does allow us to really interact with people around the world. Like I said, I've been able to make a lot of really great connections um, literally globally. Okay. Michael says UK. I figured, but <laughs> just had to ask since we had the Canadians on uh, LinkedIn today. Um, so Sue, I want to start off this discussion today. Obviously COVID is very prevalent in our lives. We were talking right before the broadcast that you guys are actually getting ready to go into a unfortunate, but probably necessary full lockdown at this point. But as far as COVID goes, what are some of the trends that you've seen um, in Ergo in the past year that are maybe trickling into 2021? And then we'll talk more about the return to work side of it as well. But what are some of the trends you've seen um, that are probably still very prevalent while people are locked down and working from home? Yeah, no, and that's where, you know, everything hit here in Canada around March of 2020. So we did go into an immediate lockdown initially. And then as we learned to adapt, things opened up a little bit more. Businesses were operating. Um, people were going back into their offices. So um, we all did take that transition period to kind of regroup and restructure and see what's going to work best. So initially, I had to jump really quickly into that virtual world. So we definitely set up some um, ways to go about performing virtual assessments, um, one-on-ones, which was still very interesting. And it is difficult from an from an ergonomic perspective because we need a lot of measurements. We're trying to take measurements and how do you do it just visually, right? So that was a challenge just to get lined up there. And then from that, I found um, just offering webinars, educational training sessions was the next step to go. We were always doing that, but not so much virtually. We would do them more in person, but I think that was where um, our, our clients at least reached out to us and said, can we at least work with you guys that way? So we did perform more training sessions than we did actual virtual assessments. So that was an interesting piece there. And now we had, we had some flexibility there probably from July up into the end of November, but then all of a sudden our numbers really skyrocketed and yeah, we are um, scheduled to lock down as of Thursday again. So here we are adjusting um, to that, so. And with the virtual assessments, were you doing actual video virtual assessments or were people submitting photos? That's something I've talked a lot about with different mm -hmm. um, ergo specialists and ergonomists in the field of what was really working the best. And I know you mentioned the measurements being a challenge, but um, yeah. just wondered, you know, what some of your best practices were from those virtual assessments. Yeah, well, we would start off really sending um, some questionnaires to the client to get started um, so that I could get a good background information on what's going on with them, but then also just their, their 
their anthropometrics, we call it, right? Or the, knowing what body size they are, but then also learning more about what they do on their job. So we did that initially through questionnaires, and then we would just get right on um, on our platform to do virtual one-on-ones. Uh, so I, they would actually show me. They would part of the questionnaire was also in um, sending pictures for sure. So we had specific angles that we had asked them to take pictures of. Uh, while they're sitting at their workstations if we're doing an office assessment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then once we were live one-on-one, -on -one, that gave me a clearer picture. So I was using some technology there to try and capture um, from their photos what I could create for measurement purposes there. So it was a little bit of both, trying to generate some some of that technology into into what we were doing, we have to really to be a little more accurate. Right. What we're, yeah. So. And have you seen um, one area being the most likely place for a recommendation being made? Oh, for um, our, yeah, I guess from, if we're talking about working from home, that's really where things transition and where people are struggling the most is how do they set up a workstation at home and where. So uh, the, there are definitely limitations. So I would find the biggest one is a chair. Um, no one had a great ergonomic supportive chair. Um, they're using their dining room chair. So that was a challenge right there. So we were trying to offer them just quick fixes to adapt to what they were currently using, and then obviously making some recommendations um, to the employer, uh, or if it's up to the employee themselves, what they could do to find something that's gonna be a better fit for them. So chairs were a big priority, and then work height. Um, if most people are working off of a dining room table or maybe an, an island in their kitchen, you know, so the heights are, are way off and hence the awkward postures that kind of stem from that. So that is a big one. We talked about work height. How do you adjust yourself to that? So those were your two primary, really. Um, but then I always go back to focusing on changing it up, changing your position, and definitely not just sitting on the couch with your laptop. Right, right. <laughs> and Stephanie, I'm kind of curious. So when people started working from home, a lot of people, as you mentioned, were working right off the dining room table. Um, from a design perspective, could you look at some of those setups that probably you'd seen on LinkedIn or in newspapers or friends posting on Facebook and just kind of cringe at what they were putting together at that point, even with the limited knowledge you might have on ergonomics specifically, but just from the aesthetic, imagining to work in that space all day? It's hard because I think even mentally you need, it's, it's way better to work in a nice space. And I think when you surround yourself with, you know, nice looking things or, or a great environment, it's you're automatically going to work a little better in that space. So even that, just not even the work surface or but your surroundings, that's huge as well. So I think that was important as well as trying to, um, yeah, you're just, you're seeing those setups and you're just thinking, oh, I just, you know, wish I could portion you off somewhere. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think the big thing um, has been trying to find that dedicated workspace so that Absolutely. you can have that set up. And I think when we started working from home, it was for many people working just off their laptop. And now that we are amazingly almost a year into this situation at this point, um, people are starting to look at those investments to make for um, either a monitor arm or a different keyboard or mouse to set them up more permanently, but then also into the furniture space, realizing that even after COVID does subdue itself a little bit, um, there's probably going to be a lot more flexibility in the workplace to really have that work from home time and then maybe not going into the office as often either. Yeah, I think so too. And I think people in the beginning, everyone thought this was short term. And then, you know, as it kept progressing, like you, you come to the realization that, you know, this is going on a lot longer than possible. And even a few of the um, webinars that I've been involved with, with, you know, architects and things like that, they're saying that 
you know, we likely will never go back to a situation where people are in the office Monday to Friday. So I agree, people are now kind of shifting their thoughts to setting up something um, at home where they might be there three days a week or, or two days a week, even as things clear up and we get healthier. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, around the world, we just now have someone joining from Brazil. So I, I like I said, I love seeing where people are watching from. Um, it's it's truly a global situation. I have these same conversations with people no matter where they're located in the world. Um, so definitely relevant to have. And I think at this point, a lot of people are wondering, okay, we need to have our work from home set up in a better position than it is currently. But then I think from what I've heard as well, many offices and companies are starting to look at that return to work plan. Um, so I don't know if Sue or Stephanie wants to go first, but um, I'd be curious to know what some of the concerns are going back to the office. I've heard different rumors of what that could look like for different companies, um, but from an ergo side and the furniture and design side of it, um, what are some of the concerns that you've heard and um, maybe some of the plans going forward for that? Okay, go ahead, Steph. You got the goods on that one. What we've found so far is, is those who are keeping employees um, in the workplace, they're really just trying to reconfigure what they have. So that may be going from, you know, six desks within a certain geographical footprint in the office to, to maybe only two or, or down to four and adding, um, we're seeing a lot more uh, requests for not just um, partitions, but more going back to a cubicle, um, which from a design standpoint, Everyone was was going away from that. It was yep. an open concept, and now we're we're right back to trying to cube people in. Um, so that's really what we're finding is is not just the flexi, but the actual spatial divisions, whether that's through partial walls or through barriers and things like that. So just really reconfiguring what they have there is what we're finding right now. And have you seen or heard that it would be a lot of dedicated workspace? Or um, I've heard some companies are going back to trying to spread their workers out that they may end up having to work in something like the cafeteria or a common space. So they're reconfiguring, like you said, the existing equipment. But because people may go into the office only one to two days a week, they want to repurpose that and have people bring in either their own mobile setups or like a hoteling type station. Is that something that's been trending in the discussions in Canada as well? Uh, in this area, we're talking about it a little bit. So not so much of the, the hot desking, just because then you're like just plopping in whenever you can, but the going to the hotel desking where you might be able to sign it out for half a day. Um, so what we were talking about too is doing maybe like a like a height adjustable desk for people, but then everyone might have their own um, mobile storage so that they're keeping their own things within that. And when it's their day to work in that space, they may be bringing their own mobile storage with them. Um, and that way you can, you know, disinfect the works, workstation in between, but yeah, keeping their own, their own personal belongings all together and, and just bring it with them wherever area they might be working from. And Sue, anything to add as far as the uh, rumors that you've heard or concerns about returning to work? Yeah, I think it is about the sharing of equipment, um, especially when it comes to chairs. <laughs> That's a, a, a personal thing, right? And people are fit to a chair that's suitable for them, how do they make it so it's a uh, multi-user? And from there, I think the fabrics are changing. Um, you know, people are gonna go away from fabric and maybe go to more, it's more of your vinyl um, so that it's more easily wipeable. So yeah, I think there are considering that. That's where it's at right now is how do they make it um, still user friendly, still fit the person when they're there, but then how do they disinfect and treat it from that end of it? So you're kind of combining a bunch of things. Like you mentioned, just carrying your own laptop, your personal keyboard and mouse, that's definitely something that's happening. We're getting requests to know what, uh, what would be the best kit to provide. And then also bags, people don't think about that, but then now they got to carry it 
from the office back to their home. So they're even including uh, carry-on bags. What style may be most appropriate? For example, is it a backpack style or is it, you know, the over-the-shoulder style? So we're getting a little bit of everything coming through right now for requests for information and guidance. Yeah, I think that it's it's the discussion that's going to continue really forming and taking shape as we go through the year and understanding what budgets companies have available to do that. Um, I'm hearing the same thing with just returning to work, that shared space, and having that kit developed. And that's where I think, you know, working with Ergo consultants and really determining what that best kit would be for the people's needs is certainly important. But then from the furniture side too, making sure that it is furniture that can fit a variety of people when it's not just, you know, Goldilocks chair, but it's <laughs> everyone's chair to have to go between um, it is important to consider as well. Are you hearing any concerns, um, which I know it's a little outside the scope, but I think it's playing into our conversations of the cleanliness of the workspace and how you combat that with, um, is it bring your own equipment? Is it sanitizing differently? Have you heard anything around that in your recommendations or um, consultations you've had? Well, like I said, for us, it's the the materials definitely. So with chairs, they're they're looking at something that's easily wipeable now. So that is something you want to pick. You know, the uh, material that is going to hold up to those cleaners as well so that it doesn't break down. Some of the materials are that faux, faux uh, vinyl, faux leather, and it, the, the, um, the toxins and things are going to affect it and break it down very quickly. Um, and then with the furniture, there's actually some really unique laminates out there that are anti antimicrobial, um, but they've got some things coming forward that are are going to be there to support those needs now. Um, Steph, I don't know if there's a couple other things on those laminate selections. Um, yeah, there are. Every company now is coming out with a few, so they definitely don't have the color variety of the other laminates, but almost every um, Canadian manufacturer that we deal with, um, they're, they have at least five or six laminates that are the antibacterials. So, for us especially, um, we always used to suggest them for people who were in schools and things like that, where there would be like a high turnover of people in and out of the office, in this case kids. But now with everything that's transpired, I mean, I would recommend it to anyone at this point. So Helmer um, put a comment in there, which I think is um, very on point. He said, in the company where I'm an ergonomist and he's in Brazil, um, we are planning more investments in mobile technology, and we provide resources for purchasing furniture for work at home, which I think that's great. Um, I love hearing about stories like that around the world, that um, with myself being in the U.S. and Canada, I'm pretty in tune what's going on there. But in areas like Brazil, um, that is great to hear that you guys are taking those steps in investing. Um, he also asked the questions, how do you plan the organization of the workday at home and what form of registration was adopted? So I'm not sure on the form of registration there, but as far as the workday at home, any tips, Sue? Um, I certainly have my fair share, but <laughs> for um, Ergo and really having that success at home besides the equipment side, which we all know is a great thing to have, but just general you know, tips there. Yeah, honestly, that is the trick um, for everyone because you're you're dealing with a variety of people. Some have little children in the homes, some do not, but some have the pets. So it is about designating space for sure. Couch is okay for a while if you've got that that spot and it's quiet and no distractions. Um, that's the big one, having distractions. But from an ergonomic perspective, yeah, you want to change it up, move around a little bit. You don't want to be stuck in one spot, sitting down all the time. So I, I actually introduced that whole, okay, where's a good sitting workstation for you, but where can you incorporate some standing as well? So there you're just creating some, um, uh, coming up with some, 
things that you have around the house that you can modify, right? Raise your computer up uh, if you can get find even. Some people, if you're tall enough, we even talk about using a laundry basket, right? And <laughs> something that's solid enough. But then it's taking your breaks too. It is a it's tough to balance between the two, work and home. And you've got so many distractions. You want to get some food prep for your dinner. You want to do your laundry. You know, there's so many things you can do to incorporate as breaks, which is great. Um, but then it's getting to, you know, the work as well and getting, in, and that's where Steph already mentioned, is having a spot where you're comfortable, where you can really kind of, hone in the, the mental side of, of getting back to work when you need to. Yeah, I think I put the uh, the banner at the bottom right now to, for kensington.com. And if you go to the blog section, we have done so many blogs and there's certainly more to come on work-life balance and some of those tips and tricks and stretching throughout the workday. Um, because, you know, like I said, I can recommend or you can recommend equipment or furniture all day long. But if it's yeah. not used properly and we're just sitting in one space, it's really not going to help the long-term solution. So um, I think that dedicated workspace is certainly key, uh, whereas if you are looking at your laundry room, like I can see right now, and my kitchen <laughs> island from where I sit, it's like <laughs> I need not clear plexiglass. I need a box around <laughs> in order to do that. Limit yeah, that well, distraction that's and, there. and as you mentioned, uh, doing the stretches and the exercises, you have a better opportunity now that you're home. You're in your relaxed clothes. You don't have to worry about wearing heels and doing some, you know, leg lunges or something. You have, you don't have anyone looking over your shoulder to see what you're doing. So you have more opportunity to incorporate a few exercises in between on those little breaks. So that's what I think is actually a benefit um, to us that we have some better, more opportunity to, to incorporate those things. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, well, I do want to ask, since um, you are here as one of our valued partners with Kensington, um, do you have a favorite product from Kensington or that you would recommend the most, would you say? I always like to ask our guests that. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a few right away I can list off, and especially, I guess, with this work-from-home scenario. And um, really, it is an IT nightmare um, from that perspective when we talk about that each each uh, individual employee carrying their own equipment, um, how difficult that's going to be for IT. But honestly, um, I could list off right away if laptop is the mobile piece that you're using, it's definitely the laptop risers. You guys have a few there that are good options depending on what height you need your screen to be at, but definitely separating the screen to the keys. Um, you cannot work off a laptop all day long and expect to be in great postures. So the laptop risers for sure, and then your keyboards and mice are, are amazing. Um, you've got your standard ones, right? Standard by the means of size um, that can accommodate most. Uh, the one key I want to talk about there on, on keyboards is finding the one that works best for you, right? Whether you prefer the mechanical keys or whether you like the real thin um, laptop style keys, that is something to take note of. And then it's also body, individual body size and how you can match yourself up to that. So um, you guys have a good offerings there from keyboards and mice to accommodate from shoulder width is a big one, right? We talk about, for me, for example, um, uh, we're, I'm a lot narrower in the shoulders compared to some. So a regular size keyboard may be too big for me. Um, it, the keyboard's bigger than my shoulder width. So that means my mouse is going to be outside of my reach. Um, so that's a tough one, and that's one that I'm really encouraging people to take note of the size of the keyboards. Um, so that's a big one. I would say from there, footrests are the other good one. All your accessories are great. <laughs> well, thank you. We love to hear that. <laughs> yeah, well, and the one particular is your soulmate comfort footrest because it's got all the adjustments you want. It's got your height adjustments. So depending on where someone works, whether it's at um, 
a shorter desk, but then if they move over to uh, their counter island in the kitchen, you have the ability to adjust it. But then the other one is the lockable feature. So some people hate it when you've got that pivoting motion constantly on your footrest. So this one has the ability to lock it into the position that you want it to too. So I love that one for sure. Awesome. Yeah. And I think it's important to note on footrest too, that it's a, it's a common misconception that you have to be short to need a footrest. <laughs> and yeah. I can't tell you in my ergo consulting days, how many times I recommended to someone very, very tall, um, a footrest just for that movement piece of it. Um, mm -hmm. And just having that rockability basically for it. And they looked at me like I was the craziest thing they'd seen in a long <laughs> time. Um, but I think it's a totally valid thing to have that movement incorporated. Um, but I also hear you on having that lockable feature is nice because it would certainly, some people do want that platform to really yeah. rest their feet um, on there too. We did have a couple questions here before I get to the spotlight of products uh, that I have to show today. The first one is from Marina, and she said, my daughter works on camera. Anyone enjoy one of those pedals that sits under the desk? Have you done the the bikes underneath the pedals at all? I, yeah, I have seen them for mm -hmm. sure. We've um, taken a look at them, and yeah, I mean, it's definitely a way to get some blood flow going through your lower legs, and it's a matter of having enough space under the desk and still working at good heights. So if you can match those up, then I think it's a great idea. And yeah, from my standpoint, it's, if, if you're one who sits at the desk for long periods of time, you want, you're not one that's gonna get up and take the break, then those could be a good alternative, I think. And then Helmer um, also asked a question, which I can weigh in on this as well, but what tips can we give employees um, so they don't procrastinate work at home? And I can tell you um, from my experience, I was working from home pre-COVID, um, pre-Kensington as well. I was working from home some. Um, and so for myself, I had to find out I had to have a consistent schedule so that it was mimicking the workday. Um, and that was really important to have that division between work and life. And I think employees, once they can find that dedicated workspace with a schedule and really determining this is my spot to work versus my spot to play or cook or lounge, yeah. whatever, is a really great division to know when you're in that space, that's what it is. And it, the same thing honestly goes, I have a nine-year-old daughter that we were just talking about it last night that she's been on a very consistent virtual schedule um, for the last probably month or two now. And she's really excelled at having that schedule. Whereas they went through a lot of different varieties where they'd have Zooms all day. Then they had one where it was one in the morning and nothing the rest of the day. And that was a struggle because that schedule was changing and there wasn't any type of structure. So that would be my biggest tip is just making sure that you can actually have that structure and dedication for work versus life. Anything yeah. else to add to that? Well, I, I have had the experience of working from home as well. When I was in my early consulting days, that's exactly what I did. Uh, all my, my time spent on the computer writing reports, uh, that was all done at home. And like you, I had kids that were at that younger age at the time. So it really, you do really need to break down, okay, how many hours a day do you need to be putting in for work? Mm -hmm. So from there, I make my list, honestly, between what I have to do for responsibilities at home and what I need to do for work. And from there, sometimes my work demands didn't require me to have a specific time that I had to get work out. So that meant I could do some work in the evenings instead. So as, but like I said, I had to make and slot those in. So that's kind of where my list came into play, my schedule. Really, I just had to write it out for me so that I could say, okay, this time is blocked out because of, you know, time spent with the kids, but then this is the time I'm going to be doing some work as well. And really that is, like you say, structuring and making your list and scheduling is, is the key right there. Yeah, I think that um, 
a lot of people probably pre-COVID thought people that worked from home didn't really work. And if that was the case and they still kept sending a paycheck, then that would be a very crazy idealistic world, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I think COVID has made the general population realize that working from home can work and mm -hmm. you can actually be the same or more productive at home when you are able to do things on your schedule, if that's possible um, with the company that you're working for as well. So I think it's opened the eyes of a lot of people on not only the work from home side of it, but like I said, also bringing ergonomics as a mainstream topic and concern um, hmm. because they were maybe just given that in the furniture choices or equipment choices before. Um, but when you're forced to work on that wooden kitchen chair, it becomes a whole new topic of conversation there. So yeah, most definitely. Um, well, I'm going to end with, um, I did a setup spotlight today, knowing that we were talking about returning to work and I did include some of the items that Sue talked about. Um, and so, as she mentioned, with the shoulders being a little bit more narrow and choosing um, what you would actually have to be a little bit smaller um, keyboard there, we do have the multi-device compact keyboard. So it's very small. It's great for petite users. There's no um, number pad as associated to it. And it comes in two colors, but it's nice and wireless and literally, like, super um, mm -hmm. small there, too. So... Um, that's a really nice one there. And then also I have one of our um, laptop risers that this is our older model. This is the easy riser. And I think it's older because it's been on the best selling list for ever. It seems like with Kensington, but basically this would be the laptop riser. It's adjustable to different angles. I always feel like I'm on like the home shopping network when I'm doing this. <laughs> um, we do have SmartFit built into it, which is that rainbow color grid right there, which really helps people determine the correct fit. Um, and so every uh, product that has SmartFit built into it has a hand chart that comes in there that gives you a approximate measurement of where that screen height should be for you. But it's also incorporated into the footrest, monitor arm, some of our other products that are there. Um, and then let's see here. Oh, this is a fun one. So you talked about all the different mice. I don't even know, Sue, if you've seen this one. So this might be a surprise. <laughs> okay. Have you seen the cases that we have? No, I have not. So talking about um, germs, portability, all that kind of fun stuff, some of our track balls actually have hard cases for them. And so this is for our Ergo Fusion, which is one of the newer track balls. And um, basically, it's like a present. Okay, here. that's so, great. The trackball comes out. Again, I feel like I'm on, you know, the shopping network here. <laughs> Three easy payments. I'm not just kidding. Um, so with that, basically, it is nice that it even has a spot for the dongle or the little wireless plug in there so you can keep everything together. And I appreciate it just because I can tell you um, in my consulting days, I actually had a drawer full of the balls from trackballs that people <laughs> had lost or we had a lot of um, shared spaces and I'd find them literally on the floor because people would be moving around all the time and they're in there tight, but it's, you know, sometimes hard to avoid that if things are getting bumped around and that kind of stuff. So I'd ask, I'd get emails asking if I had a ball that they could have. So that's that. And then the last thing I want to show you, which I think is a pretty unique product to Kensington, um, it actually fits really well with the mobile keyboard. So you've got the short keyboard here. And then we do have a wrist rest that actually fits right to that compact keyboard too. And I bring that up because I know it's kind of a sore spot for some ergonomists to include that wrist rest there. Um, but I do think it's something to consider when you're looking at those working heights being a little bit taller to really pad that edge a little bit more. If you're going to be resting no matter what, at least it's a softer surface there and it is a very slim surface as well. So um, having all of those items would truly be uh, a great ergonomic setup and you could take it, throw it in your bag and take it to work and have it there at home, wherever it might be. So that was my setup spotlight today. Um, so you can either check those out at kensington.com or like I said, we have our partner from Ergo, Ergo Now here, which you have a very easy website. 
I appreciate yeah. that versus, you know, backlash <laughs> and everything else, but ergonow.com. Um, so any last thoughts from Stephanie or Sue um, today before we finish? Go ahead, Steph, you start. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we just want everyone to uh, stay safe and definitely reach out and we'll see what we can do for you. Um, I know for us here, we do retrofits as well. So that's always an option. You don't even always have to start from scratch, but reach out to your um, your local experts in the area and uh, I'm sure that they can help you out. So if you're near us, by all means, we'll do what we can. Yeah, and same on my end. Um, I always encourage people to reach out to me if they have specific questions, right? Give me their their setup, their scenario, and I can try to respond by helping them with some suggestions all the way around. I, I definitely encouraged uh, me using myself as a resource and uh, being that we are very familiar with all the products that are out there. Um, that's where we come in and where our specialty lies. So we would appreciate uh, anybody contacting us and reaching out and uh, seeing where things go. We are in the midst of changing, uh, moving over to a new website. So that hopefully will be launched within the next month. So I'm very excited about that. It is, yeah. So we got lots going on all the way around. We're using this time to, uh, to recreate a little bit, but also to to be out there and uh, encourage everyone to stay safe and work healthy. Awesome. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Sue, for joining me today. I know it's always a little scary to be live on camera, um, but I appreciate the time and the expertise you guys have shared with us today. Again, their website is ergonow.com. And then I'm with Kensington, so you can find us at kensington.com. Um, please shoot us a message. You see all of our names up here. If you do have any further questions about furniture, ergo, any of the products that we offer and connect with us, we'd be happy um, to help you guys out and really get you connected to the right resource there as well. Mm -hmm.